Welcome back to Dial H for Heroclix. This is episode 264. I am your host, Chris Britton. Let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. And in addition to Calder, we have someone returning to the podcast, someone that was mentioned on the last podcast, and that is Simeon. Welcome back, man. Ooh, it's Dial In for Nemesis episode. No. Jeez. Wait. So, uh, we huh. have almost no news. I like how you say week. in addition. This is a clear subtraction to the show. <laughs> Ooh. No, I like Simeon better than I like you. How I mean, dare you? <laughs> you take a negative, you take a positive. It's just the crisp variety hour now. Calder can't do math. Fair. He is from the ranch, so we just we're gonna keep on trucking, and uh, we'll let you guys hash out uh, your your nemesis nemesis. What's the word I'm looking for? You guys are you just hate is each it just other. nemesis? Oh, I hate him so much. Uh, in Bad Samaritan, we're gonna play some Bad Samaritan tonight. Um, but normally we like to start us off on Dial H with what made us happy this week. Calder, would you like to start off this week? Yeah, absolutely. So this week was my brother's birthday, so we went uh, had pizza. We went saw Toy Story 4 and also we saw a movie last night as well, uh, Men in Black International. So we saw a couple of movies we needed to get off the list and then came home and watched uh, Battle Tendency and finished that up, which is really cool. So just an all around, just like a great day. And uh, on Saturday as well, I got to play some Hero Clicks online and destroy Simeon in a game. So it's always oh. fun doing that. <laughs> Was uh, the Men in Black movie any good? It was like the most okayest. Like it, it was a movie. It's a movie that came out and exists. That's kind of how bad. I feel in retrospect about Hellboy. I'm like, it was, it was there. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. So okay, uh, Simeon, what made you happy this week? Well, uh, I gotta go to Worlds of Fun in Kansas City. I gotta ride some huge roller coasters and pretend like I was flying for a little bit. So that was pretty awesome. Um, Dipping back a week before, I got to meet some cool guys in uh, Ohio, Chris included. Oh, and now nice. I realize why Calder has to have the uh, little disclaimer of ranch hand when they say sexy ranch hand, because he is clearly not the most attractive on the podcast. That's so false. Thank you. Thank Such you. Such a lie. Uh, I don't like to brag, but I'm going to brag. I'm going to brag. Thank you, Simi. <laughs> Well, oh, I, uh, speak truths. I didn't know that you guys had amusement parks in Can Kansas because I'm ignorant. Um, but that's cool. I'm glad you guys – did you go by yourself to an amusement park? No, no. I went with, like, a couple friends, and uh, there's a few first-timers that, like, we took down there. It's only, like, a two-hour drive. and. So, okay, real question. Has any – either of you ever been to an amusement park by yourself? And if so, is that weird? I've never been to an amusement park by myself. I haven't. Never. No. Would you guys go to an amusement park by yourself? Yes. Yes, I, think, I would. I think uh, I would. Maybe. Maybe. I think I would. I don't think it would be that weird. I mean, most of it is you're standing in a line anyway, like half the day at any amusement park I've ever been at. You, so you just look, look at your phone and wait to the ride the next ride. <laughs> I it don't seems know. so lonely. Yeah. It seems like such a lonely thing to do, though. Plus, yeah. you can just, like, shove all the teens out of the way and just be like, sorry, I'm important. I'm an adult. <laughs> You don't understand, and then you just go to the front of the line, and like they're too afraid to say no. Okay, all right, I like it. If there's anybody out there in podcast land that has gone to an amusement park by themselves, please let us know what that experience was like. Uh, what made me happy this week was actually today. Um, uh, Jaylene and I uh, went downtown to uh, in Indianapolis, and there was an Asian festival. And uh, we got to go in there, and we watched like live dancing from cultural, like cultural dances from the different ethnicities all across the continent, uh, including Indian. We watched uh, she's Filipino, so we took some time to watch the Filipino cultural dances, which are really cool. Um, and then it was just like an all-around nice area. It was really well put together, so that was cool. And then we immediately ended up 
So the way it was set up, it was like right outside of the Indianapolis Canal, and everybody runs around the canal. Like it's just a thing. Like people, it's just a track that people run around. So like we immediately ran after that, and then we went and stuffed our faces, and it was actually a really, really good day, really kind of wholesome day. So. That was what made me happy. But we are here to talk about the game of Hero Clicks. So uh, we do have a bit of news we will jump into in the news section. Man, you know that we're light on news when this is something that we are like all forced to talk about rather than something that we can just skip over. <laughs> and uh, that is Marvel Hero Clicks Deep Cuts Unpainted Miniatures is a thing now. And I, because I think this will just make it a little bit more entertaining, at least for myself, if nothing else. And Calder gave me the okay to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to read the solicit in my uh, extremely obnoxious 1930s radio announcer voice. Uh, Hero Clicks Deep Cuts Unpainted Miniatures come with highly detailed figures, primed and ready for paint. Is that turning into an Australian accent as I do it? It is, yeah, you're drifting, <laughs> bud. You're drifting. <laughs> these fantastic miniatures include deep details for easier painting. The packaging displays uh, these miniatures in a clear and visible format so customers know exactly what they are getting. Some miniatures include translucent parts to paint as well. Each figure comes with a brand new Switch Clicks Hero Clicks dial. The Switch Clicks Hero Clicks dial allows players to use their own painted miniatures on the dial provided or with dials from the Marvel Hero Clicks Wolverine and Cyclops X Men Regenesis storyline organized play event. Paint each figure's cost costume from your favorite era or come up with something completely original and unique. At the bottom of this, it does say that the expected release is going to be November of 2019. Uh, this is also interesting information I found. It says Master Carton Pack is 64 units per Master Carton, and an Inner Carton Pack is 4 units per Inner Carton. Uh, the MSRP for these are $4.99. So 5 bucks a pop are going to get unpainted versions of these characters. It sounds to me like they come with their own dials, probably going to be, I don't know, what do you guys think? Re new brand new uh, dials or are they going to be reused dials from the regenesis storyline they just they just uh made it so they're switch clicks so you can pop them on and off or what do you guys think Call more it? than likely uh probably reused dials uh if they are even have dials and cards uh at all honestly it's probably just gonna be reused though from x-men or genesis okay simeon what do you think i was gonna say the complete opposite because <laughs> Uh, I just don't think they will sell if they don't have like something to set them apart because you're looking at like a gravity feed where it's three ninety nine a piece and there's like some randomness to it, so you're not gonna get exactly what you want. But they're asking for like a whole extra dollar to pick like the figure that you want. And if it's gonna have the same like stats and everything, I just don't see the point in it. So what would happen if it were a completely brand new dial? With a new card, it's like a brand new figure. They're just reusing the sculpts, and you can paint them. Would it? Would you want to get into it then at the four ninety nine price point? Well, if they were new, they were different, and they were better than what they the normal ones are, and they can be used as columns and whatnot. We would see a whole lot of gray wolverines on the sideline. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, they are switch so clicks, out. and then also the Regenesis set are all switch clicks. So do you oh, not think fair. that they would just like grab the Wolverine from off of the Regenesis proper and then slap it on this new dial? If they even cared that much, they might. I, yeah. Maybe. No, Maybe. I would not. You you would not? I would not care enough to switch. <laughs> so I am just not an artistic person. I'm not. So there's no way I would ever even attempt to paint these uh that that's completely lost on me however we did and we'll get we're going to get into this in the community section we sent out a poll earlier this week for the community tuesday's question are you excited for this or are you not and i did see a lot of people commenting like heck yeah i love painting this is awesome i can't wait to do this for me personally this is a big old big old negative ghost rider you know what? Tell me we're going to start painting those My Little Ponies. Then I'll be there. Then I'll show up to little painting events, all right? X-Men, we're not there yet. 
Maybe. Maybe if I can paint, uh, paint a Pinkie Pie Wolverine style, that, that'd be actually pretty cool. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe I am down. I just don't know it yet. I just don't know you just, it like, yet. just, like, enrage your opponents with uh, your terrible painting skills. They're like, uh, what, oh, they're bad. what even they're is bad. that? Now, to go back, because I saw this as a comment, and in case I, – I just don't want anybody to be, to be confused – uh, because WizKids changed the rules on what are acceptable for tournament play, as far as modding and customs and blah, 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 you will be able to use your painted miniatures in tournament play. They are breaking the idea of modding, which I shouldn't have to say this, but stands for modification, which the definition of modification includes the word painting, right? So you would think that uh, you can't use these. You can use these because WizKids went a different way with it and said, no, modding is just like where you're gluing stuff onto your pieces or chopping them off or something like that because you don't like them or whatever. But you can actually use these painted ones in your tournament play if it comes up. If any of them are any good at all, and you would even want to use them in tournament play. So at, at least we've got that going for us, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's that's all we got going for us. That's Simeon, all I got. <laughs> I'm going to give Simeon the last word on this before we move on. I mean, I'm going to give it a shot. I have been meaning to get into painting since, like, Avengers Infinity came out, and I got all these dune buggies, and I was like, I'm going to paint these. And I just never got around to it, so maybe this will push me to, at the very least, paint Wolverine like his uncanny X-Force uniform, maybe. Okay, last question then, at least, just uh, because I kind of want to know what your guys' opinions are. I, I think I already asked you this, Calder, but since we are on the topic of Wolverine, that's the one that they pictured in the solicit, what is your favorite Wolverine costume ever made, Calder? I like the uh, the classic nose sleeves, uh, yellow and blue, with the black uh, triangles on the side. I like that one, like, but not cat whisker. That one, you know, like oh. normal mm. black. Mm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the normal the normal black and yellow mask. That's that's kind of my kind of favorite classic take on Wolverine. Okay, Simeon, what is your favorite? I'm totally down for first appearance, cat whiskers, sassy Wolverine. Really? He's busting out of chains. He's fighting a Hulk and a Wendigo. I mean, with his not man. real claws, the claws yeah. he like puts They're on like his hands. on his gloves. Yeah, just okay. so sassy. Runner up for me is definitely X Force gray and black, but my favorite one is actually brown and yellow. I have always loved that costume. So I don't know. Maybe I will try to paint. Uh, Wolverine Brown, but it'll <laughs> just it'll just go horribly. Maybe. <laughs> I think I think the only Wolverine color or like costume I should say that we really haven't gotten is like there was like a small like one year kind of thing where he put on Fang's costume and he just had like this bone necklace and stuff. But we've had so many Wolverines. <laughs> yeah, we thing. don't need that. We don't need that. No, we don't. <laughs> I remember in one of the first sets ever, it was like uh, one of the uniques was a Wolverine in nothing but black because he's a ninja and he's got a katana in one of his hands instead of his claws popping out. And back then, that was like the coolest thing ever. Oh, yeah. Amnesia Wolverine where he forgets like that he has six blades instead of one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I, if, even if I'm not looking forward to painting these myself, I am looking forward to seeing what other people are going to do with them because some people's artistic ability amazes the crap out of me. I'm like, how did you even do this? How did you even think to do this? It's amazing because I can't do anything like that. So, uh, like, called this is actually me giving Calder a compliment for once. You do excellent work on cosplay. I could never do any of that kind of stuff. You're really good at it, so... Hey, I, will, I appreciate uh, that, man. Yeah, I will uh, look forward to seeing what people are going to do with these. Uh, but let's move on. This is a game uh, called Bad Samaritan, and we'll get into the rules right after this. <laughs> so when we were at Origins, uh, I was asking for feedback from the listeners, and one of the things that kept popping up amongst many of the people was, oh my god, I really like that game you guys play. No one could remember the name of the game, but I knew what they were talking about. 
It is called Bad Samaritan, and this is how it is played. In front of me, I have three modern age figures. I also have a list of clues in front of me labeled number 1 through 20. Uh, such things on this list are like improved movement or targeting, which is number 8 on the list. Uh, any special combat symbols, which is number 12, and etc. like that. Calder has a random number generator in front of him. He's going to generate a number. I'm going to give these guys the associated clues. Uh, they are going to get, uh, cumulatively, three guesses per character, one per round. So if they guess the character after the first clue, uh, they will hear the right answer sounds like this. The wrong answer sounds like this. Uh, after three guesses, if they still have not gotten the answer correct, uh, I get a point, and you get to hear this wonderful sound cue cue because I still think it's funny. I'm not scared. Let's do it. You better choke me out, <laughs> Alex. <please. laughs> it only takes like 20 seconds. I just think that's funny, so I'm going to play it. And uh, if they get a point, they get a point. They don't get a sound cue. They're not that important. So are you guys <laughs> are you guys ready to play Bad Samaritan? Let's do it. Oh, yeah, brother. Let's start with the first clue. What is it, boys? Number four. Number four is the set number. The set number on this is, oh, that's a really good question, uh, 15? 15. Ooh, yep. that's gotta I'm going like, to make sure on that. That's common, right? That's got to be a common. C is so close to uncommon, though. Maybe. Depends what set we're in. We could be in Avengers Infinity. Yeah, oh, if it's man. a gravity feed. It could be a rare, you know, gravity yeah. feed. Right. It is definitely number 15 in the set. Number 15, Burger King, but lettuce. Okay. <laughs> Five people are going to know. Why that. do I not so have like that, that as a sound <laughs> box? <laughs> that would be a great one. Uh, uh. All right, so let's, let's go forward. Let's think it's a common just to get past this first kind of okay clue. It's not awesome. Um, we know it's no crazy supers or anything, but it could also be like Captain Marvel chase, you know? I think I might just go with Captain Marvel, just to kind of rule that out. I think it was like 15, 16 was her. Okay, uh, you, you want to lock Captain that in? Captain Marvel, like 18 was Coulson. I know that. Was Coulson really 18? Yeah, the I rare one. Like, I thought he was like 12. Okay, never mind. Scrap that. Ugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I saved Calder from this. Uh, yeah, I just actually, guess, I'm just gonna guess dupe like every single time. That would be such a bad guess. I know, but <laughs> there's there's only one dupe he can use, and it's rare. It's like probably yeah, 35 or whatever. I think he is. Yeah, it's strange I'm that so, you know so that good. Calder. How, it's like don't question me and my dupe <laughs> knowledge. Uh, okay, right. so actually, fun fact: uh, while Calder and I were hanging out last week. Uh, now, this whole time we've been playing Bad Samaritan, over the last couple of years we've been playing Bad Samaritan, I was like, I think Calder might be low-key cheating every once in a while. Are like, you serious? Like, he has HC Realms up. No, by the, just listen to the end of the story. You'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it. Um, but I'm like, maybe he's really, really good at this. Like, really, like, unusually good at Bad Samaritan. And I was like, maybe he's low-key cheating. And then I spent a week with Calder, and we're talking about Heroclix again, and he's, like, randomly, like, not, like, throwing all this Heroclix knowledge, like, oh, yeah, this figure came out in that set, and it was, like, number 14, and its top dial was, like, bop, 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 and I was, like, how, you really do know all this stuff, do you? So, long story short, he's definitely not a cheater. I apologize for yeah, ever maybe dang. assuming that it might be a possibility, <laughs> but he definitely actually knows this stuff, so... Well done, Calder. But he still can't guess number 15 yet, poor guy. It's foot uh, No, thank you. It is foot lettuce. Yeah, you're right. Uh, someone's going to look that up when they get home after this, and they're going to be severely disappointed in us. So Number 15. <laughs> All right. I'll just throw out a guess. I'm going to go – was Talos a rare in that Captain Marvel set, Simeon? Uh, sure. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Talos. Absolutely. So we can, we can get past – Clue number one. All yeah, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, fancy Dan. Cause fancy fancy Dan. Yeah, he's somewhere in there. Cause he's fancy. Yep. All right, locked in. We have whatever the, the heck Calder said. And fancy Dan. Survey says. <laughs> we'll move on to clue number two. Calder, give me a number. Uh, number nine. 
Number nine, range and number of bolts. Oh, Zero range, one bolt. Ugh. <laughs> this is so good. As oh, always, if you are niche. tuning in to Dial H, we do encourage you, why don't you go ahead, if you want to play along, pause the podcast. See if you can come up with an answer. Press play. See if you're right. See if you can beat the not as sexy as Chris ranch hand called her nuts. False. False. <laughs> <laughs> Leading the witness. Um... I feel like zero range, one lightning bolt, that's Billy Batson, right? He's like the only one with that setup. That. Uh, yeah, clearly. He's <laughs> the only one in the hero clicks that has zero range, one bolt. Absolutely. Locked in with Billy Batson? I'm going Billy Batson. All right, locked in with Billy Batson. Calder. I'm going to go with Iron Man. No, that's a terrible idea. He that is things <laughs> from his the only one with zero range is from Thor. Uh, doing? That was really bad. I'm instead... We're gonna Tony Stark better. No, he's, he's he's a common for sure. He's, I feel like he'd be too uh, too low. I'm gonna go with Alex Wilder. Alex Wilder locked in. Survey says. <laughs> Clue number three. Alex Wilder's probably like set number twenty something. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Opening attack power. Oh, so bad. Precision strike. <laughs> Precision strike number. 15, zero oh, range. Yes. Oh. This, this, I'll give you an extra clue because you guys are getting really bad clues. This character did not come from the plot line of Ghost Dad. He sucks. You're <laughs> the worst. <laughs> I don't know, like last, last week you're like, dude, why do you try to force Ghost Dad into like every episode? Like, uh, I think every time. it's funny. <laughs> I don't know why. Half of me doing this is for my own entertainment. I feel wow. like this is like zero range. Like half the Wakandans that just came out had a uh, precision strike, but I don't. I couldn't even begin to start with which one's number fifteen. Ayo, ayo. I think she's like number six. You see? Ah, darn it. <laughs> I don't know. That was like my one guess. I mean, uh, you throw it there. A quays a rare. No. Man. Precision strike. No range. Medusa has two bolts. Otherwise, I'd probably guess Medusa. Um, not two bolt, but two range. Is there anything from Reaper <sighs> with precision strike? No range? Um, uh, maybe Mr. Whatever his name is with the T Spheres. I don't think he had range because his T spheres were like his whole thing, but I know he had precision strike top dial. That's a good, yeah, Mister Terrific. Yeah. I think I'm gonna steal that instead of giving it to you. I think I'm gonna use that. <laughs> no, you, you definitely had that. Cause he, was, Cause he was pretty low. He's like a uncommon or a common. He's definitely yeah. He's uncommon. I think. Uh, oh, I'm gonna go with dupe. That's okay. such a bad guess. That's such a terrible <laughs> guess. I honestly have nothing better. That's almost as bad as Iron Man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna actually stick with dupe? Is that what you're sticking with? Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to help you even out. Even like, even Nightwing's got like four range. Um, yeah. There's Cyborg, man. Nightwing, uh, Cyberhead, Pen Blast. What else was there? There's Terra. She probably no, had number fifteen. Um, none I'm of the couple that was like hypersonic. I'm gonna say a Flash, like just there, the yeah. Flash. Okay, locked in with the flash, and Calder said Mr. Terrific. Survey says. Yeah. <laughs> Which means. I'm not scared, let's do it. You better choke me out, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it only takes like 20 seconds. Guys, guys, this is the third time I've gotten this figure through Bad Samaritan. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Number 15, TMNT2, Squirrelinoid. No. Yes! What have we oh, done? That is the third time! You suck, Calder. I feel so like Dupe was a If we would have got that, that like that Dark Shadows <laughs> trait or whatever that was like last time, I would have so guessed Squirrelinoid. But, oh. yeah. Fast, deadly uh, shadows, man. Fast, deadly shadows. All right. This goes... This is a message for whoever takes my position in Dial H once I leave. You have got to get Calder to lose to Squirrelinoid a fourth time. That is your one goal, all right? This is a message to the future. Here you go. All right, I got a point. We'll move on to figure number two. Calder, 
Give me a number. Yeah, clue number five. Uh, clue number five is rarity. It is, in fact, an uncommon. Uncommon. Okay. Oh. That's so much better than 15, though. I'm going with Billy Batson. Okay. <laughs> Locked in with Billy Batson. I'm going to go for Dora Milaje, Midnight Angel. Nope. That's a terrible idea. She is definitely a common. I'm going to go with Aim White Squad. Aim White Squad. Locked in. Survey says. <laughs> Clue number two. Number 10. Number 10 is name of special power. The name of the special power that I am choosing is called Skyline Targeting Microbots. Could that be Mr. Perfect? I mean, his are T spheres. I don't. I don't think they would be called that. Yeah. Skyline targeting microbots. I like the people out there in podcast land that are sitting there. The few people that are like, I know exactly who this figure is. Yeah, there's absolutely someone just like screaming it. Like I played this two days ago. <laughs> this so sounds like a pog generating thing, but it. Yeah, Calder, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really need you to pull your weight on this one and help. You know, at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Just a sorry, little bit. Simeon. I'm really, I'm really dragging us down. Sky After I Mike just gave you a compliment. Yeah, you get, yeah, you good. Really... <laughs> time, to, time to show them what you're made of. But everybody's gonna be like, "Wow, Chris is a liar. This guy doesn't know anything about hero books." Maybe I wasn't even being truthful. Maybe I was just trying to get into your head. Don't you do that? Don't do that. Um, Don't I do... would, I may Ter or may not lie to you. I'm not really sure at this point. Skyline targeting <laughs> microbots. So microbots makes me think like Iron Man or, I mean, someone, right? Would that be this rescue or Enigma? Like have something like that? You know? No. Uh, uh, maybe. I, so. I don't even think uh, rescue has a special power. She's got a trait. but All right. Yeah, Enigma doesn't have any special power, except for maybe you're phasing, and that's not microbots. No. Skyline's have... Why would they seek the Skyline? What is, is yeah. that a country song? <laughs> what did the Skyline ever do to these microbots? <laughs> I don't know. Man. I want to I wanna say it's like it's something... An un, so it's an uncommon, too. Ooh. Star or Trek. maybe Earth X. Like would uh, I don't think there's a very techy uncommon in Earth X though. I don't know. Man, Skyline targeting microbots. That's such a terrible one. I wanna say like Hawkeye or something like it's gotta like the power just sounds like improved targeting. So I just wanna say something with improved targeting. An uncommon Skyline targeting microbots. Like Shuri was an uncommon. She likes Oh, yeah. yeah, she's smart. She might do something like that. Um, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna lock in Iron Man. <laughs> just in, just <laughs> in me, case. You're like, yeah, sure. It sounds like a good answer, <laughs> Iron Man. I'm gonna okay. go with Shuri, okay. just so we can get right. past this one. I hope this next clue. Locked in with Iron Man for Simeon. Shuri for Calder. Survey says. <laughs> clue number trace. So mad. Thirteen. Thirteen. Opening movement power. Running shot. I hate it. Um, running shot. Yep. The running shot helps the microbots target the skyline. <laughs> As everyone knows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is this for like an unreleased Transformer set? Yes. That only Chris is aware of. <laughs> I'm cheating. I really can't wait for this Transformer set now. It sounds awesome. More meets the eye. Goodness gracious. Was Nick what? Fury from AI, he was an uncommon. Would he have microbots? I feel like Nick Fury would have microbots. You know, maybe. Maybe he would. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. That's great. That's that great sounds question. like a great idea, Batman. Yeah, yeah space. Good I can do. Space Nick Fury. He's got microbots. What a guy. Yeah, they're going to target the horizon for yep. something. Sunrise. Zero dawn, man. Let's get it. I'm throwing, yeah, I'm throwing Nick Fury in there, under Nick the bus. Nick Fury, under the bus, locked in, eye patch and all. I'm just so caught. I like, I got no idea. It just it hurts so much. This is so, 
It's so weird. Ah, so weird. I want to guess something so we can move on, but I'm also like, what would be a good guess? Is there a way to win this? Is there a way to just throw something out there? I don't think so. I definitely don't think so. I am going to go. I got running shot. Cyborg? Cyborg starts with running shot. Would he have a micro? Was he an uncommon or was he a common? He was a common. Oh. Yeah. It's rough. Man, who sucks. Runs who does run anymore? What kind of loser? <laughs> what kind of loser <laughs> runs? <laughs> I feel like I uh, I feel like I just need to delete the right answer button in front of me. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> That's Steve. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Phantom X. Phantom X locked in. Survey says. <laughs> yeah. You better choke me out, Alex. Please. <laughs> it only takes like 20 seconds. Zero 24 from the Joker's Wild. Oh. Technocrat. Technocrat is such a loser, though. Which is the second time oh I've passed gosh. this character through Bad oh. Samaritan. Is this All what right. we're doing? Characters oh, that we oh, oh. Can you hear the snaps? This is what people oh. do in jazz. Oh, yes. If he was like 80 points less, I would have used him because he has outsiders. <laughs> He's 80 points. <laughs> <laughs> My point stands for. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, we're going to move on to number three. Can I get the sweep? Can I have my third ever sweep? I guess we'll find out. Calder, give me a clue. I don't want, I really don't want to. I don't want to give you anything. I need a third sweep. <laughs> Number give 18! Number Woo! 18! All right, so in case you didn't know, 17 through 20 on the list are free plays, which means these boys can ask questions like, what's the name of a special power? Or something like that. What do you want to know about the figure? Do you oh, want to go set or... Yeah, whatever. set number. Let's do no, not set. <laughs> no, no. Set oh, number uh, locked in. <laughs> Rarity is that what you were saying? No, I was thinking just the set overall. Like he would just say Black pa Avengers, Black Panther, and the Illuminati, or something. I mean, I if the... you if you want to like narrow it down, I guess yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe. Uh, <laughs> I throw... guess if you want to, I guess. I'm gonna throw wild like guesses out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you want? Set. Yes. All right. From Calder's all-time favorite set, oh, no. Star Trek. Ooh. Whatever the OS <laughs> theme stands for. Uh. Hero clicks away team the original series. That's what the OS stands for. Hey, I think your phone's vibrating. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Star Trek. Star Trek. Who is in Star Who is in Star Trek? What's a Star Trek? Batman. Uh, Batman. That's a pretty good guess. You got Kirk, you got Uhura, you got uh you got Trelane. Um he's a popular one. There's Bele, there's uh Yarnek. I don't know. The so, Horta. 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 What were the name of the green ladies? Chris got those past this once, and I, if he's doing a theme here, I might just want to guess them. Dorian female. There we go. That would is be that, a pretty good guess. Is that a is that a figure? I Shut up, Chris. Don't sure. act like you don't know. <laughs> what? I only know because if you run three of them, you can drop someone's defense by three, and then mind control them, and it's super effective. I uh, thought they were Orion though for some reason. Oh, it could be Orion female. Did I? What did I say? The Dorian. Dorian? Something hey, actually, it. did you guys know that there is a company called Orion and is not pronounced Orion? Because for the longest time I thought it was, and then I actually had someone that I know that worked there, and they're like, you're pronouncing that wrong. I'm like, no, you guys are. <laughs> it's like Sabre, you know? Sabre, <laughs> Sabre. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go with Orion female. Orion I'm pretty, female. Pretty sure it's Orion. I'm going to go Locked with uh, Sulu. Sulu. I'll give you the lieutenant. Locked in for Lieutenant Sulu. Survey says. <laughs> Clue number two. Ah, seven. Number seven is generic keyword. Oh, I need to click on this figure probably to know what the generic keyword would be. Let's go with warrior. Warrior. 
Okay. A warrior. Uh, I mean, there's some Klingons. There's Kirk, who's shirtless. I think yeah, he's he, got warrior. He's got warrior, yeah. Um, that's pretty You're much like, it. As Klingon as commander, <laughs> and then Klingon, uh, like, commander, and then Klingon lieutenant or something, maybe. You want to double Klingon it up? Yeah. All right, I'm going Klingon commander. I'll do lieutenant then. All right, locked in. Klingon commander, Klingon lieutenant. Survey says, clue number three. I am, I am one clue away from another sweep, boys. Thirteen. Thirteen. Do, do. It is opening, movement, power, uh, charge. Huh. Sucks. <laughs> huh. This is a very common theme with, <laughs> uh, with warriors, just to let you know. Well, I already guessed Sulu, but I know Chase Sulu has charge. Um. I think the green dude holding the rock above his head has charge, like super strength charge. Uh, I want to say shirtless Kirk probably has charge with like close combat expert. So he had his whole free close combat expert thing. I don't know if he had charge. Yeah. Or not. Maybe Kang. You know, there's that other chase. Kang also. I, don't, I can't remember if he was a warrior, if he had charge or anything cool like that. I bet he did have a warrior. Man. I think most of the set did not have a warrior, though, so... Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if they were monsters, like the alien guys, I feel like those were for sure, like, they just had brute or monster and they didn't have warrior or anything like that. That makes sense, yeah. So, fun fact, though we have not done it in a while, uh, the segment called uh, Hidden Gems, I have definitely picked M113 Creature on Hidden Gems as an amazing uh, monster piece. He's the, like, the white ape-looking thing with the unicorn horn. Does he have a unicorn horn? I think that's the one. Oh, no, he doesn't have a horn. But, there's, yeah, he is, is it, like, the is white the... ape thing. Oh, okay. Because there's also oh. a brown guy with, like, a stick. Very furry dude. Oh, anyway. yeah. He's, he's giant. <laughs> yeah, there's that guy, too. Some weird aliens out there. Charge. Yep. Man. <laughs> Warrior charge. Star Trek. I'm going with Kirk. Even though All there's right. only one that could possibly have charge. Captain Kirk. Well, there are numerous Captain Kirks in this set, so... Uh... I can't remember if the mere dimension Ahura had stealth or charge. I'm going to say stealth. That's what I was thinking, too. I was thinking yeah. maybe she could be a cool pick because she was real violent. Ugh. Come on, Calder, give Chris, it to me. Chris is such, like, just the worst. Uh, to be fair, it has been a while since I chose Star Trek. Yeah, bad Samaritan. Piece. We finally had really good clues, and we get Star Trek, which really sucks. I, I feel bad too because I've got the whole set. It's sitting in a box, just like I can. Do see you it. really? Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> I can see the box from here. It says you know, Trek. I'm gonna go with Kang. I got nothing else. All, All right. right. Locked in with Kang. This is the last one, ladies and gentlemen. Service says. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared. Let's do it. You better choke me out, Alex. <laughs> It only takes like 20 seconds. My God, guys, my third sleep. I did it. We did it. We just pack it in for the night. Nothing can get better than this. Uh, that is going to be number 45, a character that I've used in Bad Samaritan and gotten them through as well, and that is Shauna. <laughs> oh no, the 25 point like super rare. That. That was the theme for tonight. I was like, I'm just going to pick pieces I've definitely picked before. And I did it. And they all made it through. Man. <sighs> You're a bad show. man, Chris Britton. You're Whatever. We have man. a sound cue out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you did get some form of enjoyment out of that entertainment, that is what we are here to do for you, is provide you with entertainment and get you guys through your weeks, um, which is why we like to tell you that Dial H for Heroclix works off the value-for-value value model, and if you feel like we did give you entertainment in your life, and you feel like giving us a little bit of that value back, you can jump onto our Patreon, where... 
you can get your special heroic title. Now, we actually have a lot of new listeners, according to my numbers in front of me from Podbean, uh, from Origins. So I would like to say officially welcome to Dial H. Uh, and we should probably explain, because it's been a really long time since we have explained, what these heroic titles are and what they're for and why do we even have them. Well, simply put... Uh, they're honorary titles, and it's just to feel like you guys are part of the community. Um, there is like a hierarchy ranking structure based off of your guys' uh, history of like patron patronage with the podcast. And the higher you go up in the hierarchy, the higher your title goes. So you start off with your basic level citizen, but then after that is your vigilante, and then your protagonist your superhero or supervillain, which once you get to that rank, you can actually name yourself with a superhero or supervillain name. Something to just be fun about it, you know? Like you can get yourself named in the uh, community section. So, And then the last one, which we have, is the Dial H Superfan. And people are always kind of like ranking up, and at the second episode of every month, we have a heroic ranking up ceremony where uh, – you guys will rank up if you if you move from level to level. So it's it is very much like leveling up in the Dial H Hero Clicks podcast, and just to feel like you guys are part of the community, and we really appreciate that. We will always acknowledge you as those titles in the community section, or if we mention you, we'll try to do that. And then also, you will always be put in the podcast show notes for everywhere that you can find the podcast show notes, where we also often link uh sometimes there's some hidden jokes in there or something like that but you guys will always be credited as producers of the podcast at the bottom of the show notes so there you go that's what it is and uh we might i don't know it's a little weird this week but we're going to get into some stuff in the community section there are dozens of us dozens every week on community tuesdays we put out a community tuesday question which is why it's called community tuesdays uh, up on Facebook and on Twitter. This week, we decided to just make it like super simple and put out a poll. And the poll was, WizKids is unrolling unpainted hero click switch clicks to be swapped between Regenesis dials. How do you feel about painting your own Wolverine? Now, on Facebook, uh, I, I, we did it a little bit different, but it's all going to come kind of round out the same way. Uh, I put love it or hate it on Twitter. We got 42 votes. Final results are 74% of people said that they hate it from <laughs> from Twitter. 26% of the people said that they like it. Um, I, I might jump onto a couple of the comments, which is really weird because I did not expect to get comments on this particular thing, and then we got completely inundated with answer like comments. Oh, a ton. Oh, my gosh. These people are very people, opinionated topics. Yeah. I, I was like, this is just – it will be a really easy one, real simple uh, Community Tuesdays, you know, just a poll. But and then everyone's like – yeah, I'm not going to answer your other questions, but let me jump on here, <laughs> which we do appreciate. It's fun. Glad you guys jumped on. But what did the Facebook poll look like? So the Facebook poll had 130 people vote in it. 28% said, let's paint. And, um, oh, shoot, I'm covering it up. And 72%, the other half of 100, duh, said pre-painted for me. <laughs> so almost identical numbers. It's looking like three-fourths of people hate this idea. Um, but at least a quarter of the people are interested in doing it. Um, I, I, I think it would probably be a little bit fun to, if you want to pick like just a couple of your top favorite answers, at least I'm, I'm going to grab a couple that I thought maybe had like a good idea behind it or, uh, this one was just really funny. I thought it was super funny. Um, vigilante collectible said, I already have a job. I don't need more work. Jeez. <laughs> Do you have anything on Facebook? Uh, yeah, I really liked Malcolm Rush's comment. He just said, hell no. And I, I thought that was great. <laughs> okay. Um, Citizen Chris Kurt said, it's not like they will lower the price since I have to buy paints. And that actually was a – I mean that is a thing. So if you are not already into painting miniatures uh, and this is going to be your first step into the realm of painting miniatures, you're going to have to buy supplies unless you just happen to have them sitting around your house. So this isn't really like a – Oh, it's a price point of only $5. Well, now you have to buy paintbrushes and paint, and also there's very specific types of paint. I don't know a lot about painting miniatures, okay? I will never claim that I do, but my understanding is that 
their specialty kind of paints to use on. You know, that's what they'll say. That's what they'll tell you. Is it real? I, you know, I like, there's certain paints I like to call model paints, and they're like 4 to $5 for a, like, this little itty-bitty, like, bottle of, like, red or blue paint or whatever. I sometimes, I just use acrylic, like, a lot of the time. Maybe it shows. They're like, the engine uses acrylic to paint on my fan miniatures. How dare you? But, like, like, come on. The pieces of plastic, like, it looks fine. I, I use acrylic sometimes. Uh, that's cheap. Those are normally like 90 cents for a really like a three times bigger bottle. But also a lot of people know that I like painting and stuff. So I already have paint brushes. So a lot of people actually buy me paints for Christmas. Super easy. So just get them for free. It's super easy, guys. Duh. I don't know you thought about that so before. Um, you can do. I, I like model paints. They do look shinier a lot of the time, I would say. Okay. On top of paint, do do people also sometimes be, buy a like a sealant? To put over the paint? So you can buy a specialty sealant. I really like using uh, uh, Floor Finish uh, by Pledge. I think it's floor awesome. Finish? It, it'll never scrape, scuff, or anything else. It's awesome. You buy a $16 bottle. I've had this one for five years, and it's barely half empty, and I use it on more than just miniatures. I, I like Is my... Is that why your, all your figures are lemon-scented? Exactly. That is exactly correct. Thank you. Uh, okay, actually... I always wondered. Simeon just sold this for me. I'm way more into this now. If you show up at, the, at a venue and the entire map smells like a lemon field. It's just my last Oh, day. yeah. I'm going to have I'm a scratch and sniff Wolverine now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last answer that I did want to uh, cover from Twitter, because I think it really does kind of like epitomize what my own thoughts are. Or on it, and that's actually going to be from Superfan Christian Bogan. He said, "So I like the idea of being able to paint my own figures, so I can model them after specific costumes that they wore in a storyline. However, what makes Hero Clicks fun is when we do get a certain figure, but an alternate costume. The dial tends to represent that version of the character from that storyline." I was like, "Actually, yeah, I think this is this is my favorite answer." Yeah, it's pretty point. legit. No, but I love painting and modding figures. I don't do it a whole lot because, like, a figure really has to stand out dial-wise for me to want to change it, you know, into anything else. Like, I'm just not going to mod any other, like, Captain America or whatever because they all look fine the way they are. And, you know, but it depends. Like, Archon, I instantly modded him to Ash because, like, I thought the dial fit perfectly for it. So it depends. Like, they're selling these, like, hey, do you want to paint Wolverine, Magic, Iceman, or whatever, like, all that stuff. And you're like, yeah, cool, sure. I Wolverine's probably going to be the hottest one. He has the most costumes. So if you want to paint him to your favorite, it's probably – he'll be the easiest one to do as opposed to everyone else. Okay. Uh, well, let's move on in the community section. We have a block of questions from our man in Japan, Malcolm Rush. <laughs> Calder. So you like wrestling, or at least you tolerate it in the game of Hero Clicks, or maybe you're going to hate it in the game of Hero Clicks. All that matters is that Malcolm Rush has WWE questions coming up. So number one, what other powers and abilities should be included in the Circle Power set, and which color uh, slot should it be? Uh, so I'm just going to say I don't know as much about WWE as I believe Simeon and, and Calder do. So I think they're probably going to have better answers than me. Um, I Some of these questions I kind of ran together, and as I was like trying to come up with an answer, I realized that it was a better answer for like question number three than it was for question number one. So I'll just tell you one of the things that I thought would have been cool, but I think we talked about it on the podcast before, and that was maybe not so much a power but maybe a tag team mechanic where i thought it would be really cool is if you could sideline a character that is a different character entirely and then you could kind of like a uh, shifting focus trait where you can just flop them in but it would be like called tag team so i thought that would be kind of cool if that were an option yeah if they like share a keyword like free action once per turn switching in yeah I could see that. Call so, one. Uh, I mean, I have a few, like, ideas. Like, we should totally yellow, like, yellow powers. Phasing teleport, support, 
uh, defend and pulse wave. Maybe defend could be used in wrestling, but the rest of those, nah, just get rid of them. So yellow should be like just anything, like anything at all, like else besides what they actually do. I feel like uh, brown as well or bronze or whatever, uh, maybe except for – I know they already had perplex, but they didn't print perplex on Macho Man style. They just said he could use perplex. So maybe, just maybe, they'll get rid of bronze. Same thing, I think, like, dark blue and potentially light blue, too, like barrier, all except for incapacitate, I suppose. Like, it's tough, right? Like, plasticity totally makes sense. But there's, like, a lot of powers that, like, most of them work, but then a lot just, like, don't, right? So, we'll have to I don't see. know. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, WWE guys that could use poison. I can see that. I you got, like, that. Rikishi. Uh, you got... Uh, I feel like Undertaker could use poison, right? Especially like '90s Attitude Era Undertaker, with like the ring was always on fire for some reason. He would just like come out, and there's fire oh, yeah. shooting out of the turnbuckles. I'm like, that like, could be, that could be mankind poison. Mankind using Sako, like oh, that's, that's pretty good. That's gotta have <laughs> that's some pretty sort good. Of poison effect. I mean, uh, what was the dude that like spit like the green mist in people's face? Oh, man. Papa Shango, he blew like yeah, dust at people. Good. Oh, speaking of dust. Gold dust. He should have poison just because he's so freaking shiny that it's like if you, you look at it, look at him, you're blinded instantly. <laughs> That's energy shield deflection. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a lot of range attacks in WWE. I can feel it. Ugh. I still want a milk truck though. I would love it if they made a WWE vehicle line later on. And oh, that would be Kurt awesome. Kurt Angle in his milk truck. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, Stone Cold has like a motorcycle, yeah. right? Yeah. Stone Cold, but then also the Undertaker could have a motorcycle, but then also the Undertaker could have a coffin mobile. Oh, uh, that'd be so JBL, good. JBL or I who, think who had the limo purses. with the the limo <laughs> with the Longhorns on it? Uh, I'm I'm not. They, they could do it. It's a thing. Uh, I think uh, like a power that brings in a light object, like. To represent them pulling like a chair out from under the uh, ring, um, I could see that happening. See, okay, so remember a minute ago when I was like, "Oh, I could come up with the power," but oh, that fits better for a different question down the list. Number six, what you just said, I think that's actually a better answer for number six. Ooh. We'll get. There. Oh yeah, and it, see, that's the weird thing is because this is so new and we really don't know a whole bunch about it. It's kind of hard to answer some of these questions. Yeah. Uh, just because. Um, but kind of moving on to number two, like what names do you give these style of powers that we like sort of touched on? You know, like okay. you, could, you could say Simeon's thing could be like resourceful or like under the ring, etc. Something like or that. Or like hardcore champ. Like hardcore champ. Yeah, something like that. Like anyone that's like held a title or I mean, like, I don't know. Hardcore Holly, like, kind of defined that, like, thing. So did uh, Benoit and um, what was that one British dude? The British uh, Bulldog? I was going to say British Bulldog. I'm pretty sure that's it, yeah. Yeah. There's a Wait, lot of guys that, like, it, relied on weapons. This has nothing to do with that, but I just went back to Poison. Rowdy Roddy Piper playing the bagpipes. <laughs> just that's saying. All right, continue. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, like, an Intimidate-style power, like, when some some people will go in and just, like, stare at their opponent for a good, like, two, three minutes before they even, like, touch each other, like, at all. So I wouldn't mind an Intimidation-style power. Like, Undertaker will walk on, you'll, you'll hear the bells, and it'll take, like, two minutes, five minutes to get to the ring, and then he'll just stare at you. Like, hmm. Speaking like, of it. phasing teleport, you said, like, all the yellow powers phasing teleport. Taker definitely phases into the ring. Like, oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, the lights go out, and when they come back on, he's just like yeah. there. And for that big of a dude, he's moving fast. <laughs> that, that's actually true. Uh, and Sting? Sting used to do that all the time? Bro, no, he dropped down, though. He had great entrances under the ring, from on top, like the rafters. And he would even appear sometimes, and they do the lights out. So that'd be pretty great. I can't wait for a shape change Sting. Maybe the next part. Takes off the own sting. Ah. Shifting focus sting. Shifting. <laughs> Dude. I... And he has different uh, face paints. Like, he goes red and black. Yeah. By the way, New World I'm Order happy. is totally a keyword. Oh, um, yeah, I'm half excited. So I'm like, yeah, okay, we could do this. All right, so All right. sort of going on next number three. Which wrestler should get those powers? We also kind of talked about this. Like, Simeon talked about British Bulldog, etc. getting the uh, 
then a few other like champs getting the whole uh, taking a weapon out from under the ring thing. So we're sort of answering these without actually answering these as we go, which is great. Yeah. Number four. Should should WWE HeroClix powers and abilities, uh, circle powers, be allowed on non HeroClix? So like the normal superheroes and stuff. Uh, not counting Pick Power Hero Clicks because they can obviously already pick those if they're on the team. I'm just going to say no. Uh, the WWE powers are specifically made for WWE. Uh, the reason they aren't put on normal, quote unquote, normal Hero Clicks characters is because they have so far design choice, haven't needed them because they don't need specific wrestling style powers. Now, if you want to make a, what was the superhero wrestling thing called with the thing and like Titana and like a few other characters that were in it. If you wanted to like give them those powers, I could totally see that working or like D man, you know, et cetera, a few other uh, characters like that. I could totally see them doing that. I just don't think they will. And that they're going to keep these powers, uh, wrestling exclusive WWE. Okay. Simeon, what do you think? I, I think, I mean, they're definitely going to keep it exclusive to the WWE line. Cause once they bring the pack over, to like Marvel or DC and they like include these powers that just like opens up a whole can of worms that they probably don't want. I mean, they're going to get it either way, but they don't want it. Also all the characters that can already like all the, like let's say all like the martial artist characters, the characters that don't necessarily have powers, but fight kind of like, like wrestlers would. They've already got, like, Flavor Text, and they've got, like, Precision Strike, Charge Flurry, Combat Reflexes. They've got all the stuff that, like, already makes them the same. They just don't have, like, the pin, the reversal, unless it's a special power, I guess. Yeah. Okay, right on. Uh, I would say kind of the opposite answer of what you said, Calder, in a way. Um, Because the question was, should WWE here click powers and abilities be allowed in non-stuff? Not will they. So should they? I would say yes, based on very specific characters. You mentioned the what's like the ultimate class fighting championship yeah. or something is what it's called in Marvel. It's it's an in-universe Marvel wrestling group. It is a thing. And there have been numerous characters that have been on there, and you mentioned some of them. Another person, like The Thing, has been in them. But then there are other characters that it would make 100% sense that they had some of these moves. Example, Hercules. According to Marvel canon, he invented wrestling. Yeah. So, All right, that's fair. I'm like, maybe some of them, but it have to be, like, really specific. Don't just, like, give random willy-nilly, oh, oh, well, he's a close combat fighter, so nimble. No, not not really. And I think at that point, like, if it's going to be, like, less than five figures a set that are going to have, like, some sort of power like that, they just do special powers. They're not going right. to, like, revamp the pack for it. That's but, probably true. I mean, if we ever or get a bone saw McGraw in a Spider-Man set. <laughs> that would be so good. Ooh, <sighs> you got you for three minutes, three minutes of playtime. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm so ready for bone saw McGraw. I'm so ready for WWE hero clicks just because people are going to be saying these catchphrases at the table. And I just think it'll open up an air of, like, don't take this game as seriously as some people take this game. Because you sit like, across from, like, a super meta player, and you're like, I got you for three minutes. Or they won't even crack a smile. Come on. Crack a smile, guys. Like, is that the end of your turn? Or are you going to <laughs> – you've already used your four actions. Uh, like, why are you yelling at me? Uh, it's a it's a time it's a time game and you're wasting time. So I appreciate you. Uh, Judge, <laughs> I'm about to elbow drop your Unimind right into the next. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, number five. What limits should these circle powers and abilities should have as to not make them or the WWE here cooks broken? I I think this just keeps them balanced and actually makes them not terrible in the normal game since like the WWE team ability helps them. Uh, Mobility wise, protects them because they kind of lead on that these are also, they're regular people, they're wrestlers, they're top athletes, they're great. I mean, they're not like regular, like me, you, and Simeon are regular. Uh, they're obviously a lot better than us, no offense. Chris, you sexy son of a gun. But <laughs> uh, I will say that um, I think that they did actually a pretty good job of dialing it back as to not make them overpowered. However, after reviewing 
what we talked about a couple episodes ago after the fan appreciation thing. Like, I was all caught up in the moment. You know, all this is brand new, the new hotness. I was like, yes, yes. But then I started thinking about some of these things, like the WWE team ability and being able to just be completely immune to range attacks top dial. And I'm like, is this something that they are going to have to watch list down the road? Have they already created more work for themselves? Because, Hmm. like, some of this stuff seems a bit too powerful if you think about it. Also, like, there was just so much that some of these powers gave. Uh, one of them was, like, plus two breakaway and plus a free action for movement. And they ignored hindering train for movement purposes. And I was like, I mean, that's that's okay. That sounds good. But you realize you can free action move to break away and then – or you can – yeah, and you're going to get away and then and do all kinds of weird stuff with it. I don't know. It just seemed like some of this stuff might get watch listed down the road. And I'm like, oh, that means they're already get setting themselves up to sell more packs down the road. Because you're going to have to buy the updated one with oh, the watch-listed power uh, or watch-listed team ability. I feel like WizKid had, like, two options as far as WWE went. They could have gone, like, the starter set route where it was just, like, bland powers and dials. And the only reason to grab them was the sculpts. Or they could try and make them, like, different enough and, like, competitive enough. competitive enough where, like, you'd actually want to pick them up regardless of, like, if you cared about the figures. And I think that's the route they went. They're like, and I don't think that they really think things out as good as they should, but I think that they went the better route of the two. Because otherwise these would just be sitting on shelves and people would just be like, oh, yeah, I like that guy and grab one. But now people might actually grab them regardless of whether they care about WWE. All right. All right. I also want to. We'll see. I want to throw out there: if you haven't seen Scooby Doo WrestleMania Mystery, John Cena <laughs> absolutely like drop kicks a boulder and then like throws it off of a cliff, and it's like, you know, it's like Indiana Jones size. Well, like, gee, you sure Jeez. are strong there, Mister Cena. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> Okay, actually, you know what I would do? All right, this is why WizKids should have hired me, like, years ago to do marketing. Because if your goal is to make money, their goal is to make money. Obviously, they are a business. This is a hot take, and this is automatically going to be like, he's a conspiracy theorist. Whatever. Here's how you make money in business. Release a brand new thing that gets everybody super hyped knowing that it's broken. Intentionally broken. Let it overtake the meta for an entire year with a backup plan to sell another pack that's already changed the next year. So you have all of these nerds buy all this stuff, and then you you, you don't even listen to the complaints because you know it's broken. You knew it was going to be meta. And then a year later, be like, oh, we're going to sell this starter set too. It's got an updated pack with an eroded version of what we now mean. So those old packs don't even matter anymore. So why don't you buy this one? Bam, got two for one. Business, they made more money. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, WizKids is pretty much just printing money at this point. They're just (laughs) throwing random powers out. They're not even looking at the dials. This is not human intelligence. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. So, I mean, really, if you were a business, you would do stuff like this. You would make decisions like this. Jeez. So number six then, huh? (laughs) Yeah. Fine, move on. <laughs> what other inherent abilities should be included for WWE hero clicks? Pull in items out from under the ring, like a power action to generate like a light object next to you, or maybe it should be a free action. I don't know. Yeah, Cutting yeah. a promo. You should be able to stop the actual clock in the game, and you should uh, be able to talk to your opponent straight to their face. Before. Oh! Just scream <laughs> in their face for three minutes. scream at them. <laughs> and, if, and if, like, the judge is like, yeah, that was pretty good, you get plus one stats or something next turn, I don't know. It'd be awesome, though. No, I if definitely flex, I definitely think there helps. should be, like, a rivalry thing where, like, similar to, like, uh, Clone Shredder's uh, whatever, his duel, like, oh. trait. Twisted Fates, yeah. Yeah, you like you pick a character, you're like, that's my rival. And I mean that's what like ninety percent of WWE was is like cutting promos and like just this ridiculous story that went along with big dudes punching each other. 
I wouldn't what mind if, a sort of, sorry, Chris, a championship sort of ability, like current champion. Like if one figure on your force has KO'd the most amount of characters this game, that they get like plus two to defense or something like that, they become the current champion of that game. It'd be kind of neat. Yeah. Do like what a, if they released a uh, like a separate entire thing that just added new formats to the game? Like they had already come up with rules for things like cage matches, Royal Rumbles, uh, Hell in a Cell, or uh, anything like that, or like ladder matches, or so whatever. Because I'm interested. People have definitely see, come up with this. Like they've got a they've got a wrestling ring in one of the starters, and I'm interesting to I'm interested to see what the rules are. Because in WWE, there's, like, multiple ways to win. You know, you pin your opponent, you submit them, uh, they tap out, um, they're KO'd, you know, knocked out, whatever. Um, but then you, they can also be disqualified if, like, somebody comes in that isn't supposed to be part of that match. If they use, like, a weapon or, like, a move that's illegal. So I'd be interested if, like, the wrestling ring is, like, no character can be called in and make an attack into the ring or move into the ring. Oh, nice. You know, kind of thing. If it, like, just made, like, a like an 8x8 eight eight barrier for ID cards, that'd be kind of neat. Or, like, even Colossal Retaliation. I think that'd be cool. That would be awesome. What if WizKids introduced a new before-the-game-even-began mechanic where you got, like, plus 5 to map roll if you win an arm wrestling match? Oh, I know I I know I'd win map against Calder like ten out of ten. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, that, yeah. that's uh, that's just how it works in this realm with those like noodle arms that Calder's got going on. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, Chris, yeah, <laughs> yeah them, okay, okay, Chris. Them steers don't fight back as much as I do, Calder. Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, yeah, 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 okay, 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 yeah, eight hundred pound beasts with horns certainly don't fight back as much as Simeon. Oh, of course. It's, it's adorable watching you defend yourself. What's number seven? <laughs> <laughs> How would you make tag teams work for hero clicks? I already answered that one. I thought it was a good idea. Switching focus. Yep. I, I think what would be cool is because, like, one guy is in the ring. He's getting the crap kicked out of him, right? He's getting beat up. The other guy's fine. His dial shouldn't change with his dial, like shifting focus. Did. This is my only problem with shifting focus. Um, so they should have a chance to, when they're finally switched, if they haven't been switched yet this game for the first time, you can roll a D6 and heal them that many clicks so they come out fresher than whatever that guy is. It's not totally like coming out on top dial or whatever, but they're going to come in in better shape than he was if that's the first time they ever shifted. And then after that, you can make it uh, healing half or even less so, like negative four or like whatever, something crazy. I don't know. Probably just do half though, because while they're sitting on the sideline, they're getting a little rested, you know, so they can heal a little bit, tag in. You've had a chance to catch your breath. Something like that is what I think would work. So shifting focus, but with a healing mechanic is pretty much what I would do. I like that. Okay. I like, uh, if you've ever, I mean, you've watched like tag team matches every now and then there'll be like a one sided one where like the one team, keeps tagging in and out but the other team they haven't like made the tag yet and they're just like beating down beating down like the one dude and then like halfway into the match he barely makes the tag you know and his partner is completely fresh while the other two guys are like a little bit beat down and his partner and they're, laying, they're like, laying on the mat they're like half crying their hands are shaking as they're reaching <laughs> out and they're screwed come on, come like, on! Uh, and then like <laughs> then like they just barely attach you know i mean it's not, it. not uh, theater, not at all. Um, <laughs> but then the fresh guy, he just, like, pops in, and he, like, flies through the ring and, like, just keeps, like, knocking the other two, like, dudes down, like, over and over again. Like, you know, he's, he's like, ready to go. So if they did something like plus one stats or, like, uh, like hypersonic or charge flurry, something that kind of, like, made sense for that. Like, if – so, like, if when you switch out, you've taken damage since last turn – your like like swap e gets plus one stats. I don't know. I think that'd be cool. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Actually, would be pretty sweet. Um, number eight, which WWE superstar do you want to see in future sets? Okay, this one could it's a go lot. On for be like a, a half time. hour. So you want to choose like so, three or so each? I don't even want to choose three. Okay, <laughs> let's do one <laughs> because we'll be here all night. We have more questions after this. Uh, mine is going to be Booker T. Uh, I just really think it would be a funny, uh, power. Five times. Like, 
special power, the spin a like a super special quake where you just, like, every person he hit was, like, I don't know, got incapacitated or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. Booker T, to me, in the 90s, was, like, one of the equivalents of just the <laughs> identity of cool. I had yeah. no, like, I was a kid, and I just thought Booker T was so cool. I just, I don't know. That was me. Right on. Simeon? Oh, man. So many great ones to choose from. Okay, you don't have an answer. That's I'll why go. I was I'll like, go. this could be I'll a go. half hour. If I didn't say Hornswoggle, I mean, I'd just be lying to myself, right? <laughs> uh, uh, for sure. <laughs> Jeez. Um, it's got to be Rick Rude. Like, I really like Sting, and I want them to be made. But I want Rick Rude to be made. For the Express, because he has my favorite quote in all time, but it's an upper body business. And then he would modify his attack and damage value plus two against characters that have either one or both feet not touching the base of their uh, the, their base, pretty much. It's an upper body business, baby. You don't need to work out legs. No one's no one's about that life. I, I just so love that quote so much. I think it would translate awesomely. All right. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, Rick, yeah. Rick well, Rude. I don't, okay. know. I don't know who that is. Rick <laughs> Rude? Ah, uh, whatever. Whatever. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Anyways, which uh, which WWE superstar do you think they'll never make? Uh, almost all of them? Is that an answer? That's an answer. I mean, That's I, my answer. I can name my favorite, like, growing up that I just absolutely know that they'll never make, and that's uh, Chris Benoit, because... The WWE has <laughs> they've distanced themselves so far from Benoit that, like at this point, it would take some like video evidence, circa two thousand like five, <laughs> to surface for them to ever give him another shot. But yeah, rightfully so though they should. There's as of some, right now, there's some there, like, there's... The, well, you see, when you see stuff like that, it makes you feel like maybe Hulk Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior, you know, will never get in, and there's just such huge. Uh, staples kind of worries me, you know. I'd like to see a Scott Steiner. You, have you seen the wrestling promo that Scott Steiner cuts where it's like called like Steiner math? I know I haven't, no. Oh, you, you have to see it. But <laughs> just basically where he like rewrites what like attack and defense numbers are to like not make any sense. So like you roll like a three and somehow you hit because it's Scott Steiner math. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I can do uh, that. Okay, so if this is a YouTube video that it's easily accessible, this might be linked in the podcast show notes for your viewing pleasure. Right on. And uh, last question, super easy. Who is your favorite wrestler in either WDB or other companies slash promotions? I have to think. Give me a second. Simi, do you have one or no? What Probably. Was question? Who's favorite, your favorite wrestler in favorite any promotion? Favorite wrestler. Yeah. Just overall, um, I'm trying to think of one that, like, they haven't really pushed. Look at that dead air, guys. I'd say, talk. I'd say like, Road Warriors. Like, oh, that's cool. So, oh, I forgot about them. They would just look, like, crazy cool. Like, it came out of, like, the Mad Max kind of, like, style. Um, who was the dude, Steve Blackman, that, like, just walked around with, like, a bag full of weapons? I was always like, oh, you're going to get beat. That guy's got a katana in there. And then he'd pull out, like, a stick. And you're yeah, like, yeah. dude, like, I saw you put, like, a like lead bar in there. Why are you grabbing the <laughs> stick? And then he'd get beat, okay. and I'd be mad. Yeah. So, I, in full disclosure, I've never actually watched, well, maybe, like, one match or something like that from the WWE. So, it, before that, if you don't know anything about wrestling, it was actually broken up, and it was the WCW and... The WWF, and I remember this era. That was my childhood, and I most people either like one or the other because they were like completely different entities back then. So I'm gonna pick one person from each, it from either one uh, as my favorites from from them as I remember as a kid. So my favorite from WWF was The Rock, way before he was this big movie star or whatever. Just man, the bravado out there on the ring and la, 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 you know that was like super cool to me and the people's elbow i really like that and then on the uh, wcw side uh i was a really big fan of like when the new world order took over and then you had like white new world order and red new world order and then you had like the mexican new world order <laughs> as well 
Like, do you remember that? Like, that was a thing. Yeah. And, and, like, Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio was in that one. But anyway, uh, I actually really, really liked Kevin Nash. Oh, yeah. Uh, right on. I just thought he was a really, really cool. Diesel. Like, yeah, like, he was, he's, like, super, like, everyone thought he was, like, super sexy. He was, like, super tall. He had, like, the, what was it, the, it was some kind of boot, like, the big boot. With, the like, big special, boot, yeah. Something like that, they like, they'd run against the ropes they weren't and super run straight at back him, then. And he would just smoke him in the face or chest with this, like, size 13 or 14 They're shoe like, or something. what does this like, move do? Um, I drop my leg. We're going to call it a leg <laughs> drop. I clothesline yeah. them with my arm. <laughs> We're going to call it a clothesline. Left. Was it called a clothesline before wrestling or because of wrestling? Don't even these don't the, even try. These are the real questions. Calder, who's your favorite? <laughs> uh, so I feel like a classic wrestler. It's 100% Sting. He's changed so much of the years. He's hilarious in any era that you pop in. Um, and then currently it's uh, Robert Roode or Bobby Roode, however you want to call him nowadays. i not a fan of the mustache right now, but hopefully we get over that. Forget about that soon. Uh, but he's just, he's funny. He has probably my favorite, like, wrestling theme music ever. So, for sure. And that brings us okay. to a close. All right. Well, thank you, Malcolm, for writing in your question block, as always. We will move on to a completely separate question from a different listener, uh, Loyal Miller. Uh, he wrote in and said, In light of the Thor versus Batman meme that came out earlier this month, if you were to match up Avengers and Justice League, who would you have fight? And who would win and why? Mine is Iron Man defeating Batman, Sentry beating Superman, Thor and Shazam coming to a draw, Martian Manhunter and Vision with, has Vision winning. Uh, he goes on. I will say this. We could we could debate this also for like an hour. Um, I, the best and apt description I have ever found online or has it, I've ever seen anyone say – that is the difference between the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe is that Marvel are the characters are humans playing at being gods, while the DC Universe are gods playing at being humans. And that really comes out in a lot of DC power sets because they're just so entirely broken. Uh, so, like, if I were to face, like, Thor versus Superman... Even though I'm completely biased for Thor because he's my favorite character, I'm pretty sure hands down Superman would win that fight all day long, every day. Batman with prep time is a different argument versus Batman without. If you actually read Batman comics, he gets his butt handed to him a lot, a lot, a lot, um, which has one, been one of the ongoing things I've found with like Batman comics. I'm like, why is he always getting his butt stomped until – he has prep time, and then he beats everyone. So, depends. Does Batman have prep time? If not, he loses. That's my answer. Pretty much every time, like, somebody says, uh, who versus who, I instantly say they're dropped in the middle of a coliseum, neither one has home field advantage, and they're just, boom, fighting. I never, like, I don't factor prep time, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. Like, if Iron Man is in his armory, and you come at him, like, yeah, he's going to have home turf advantage. He's going to send a million different armors at you. You're probably going to lose. Like, Unless you totally, like, outpower scale him Superman style, it's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's, it's rough. Uh, without a ring, I say uh, any Avenger beats any Green Lantern, as long as they don't have a ring. So, <laughs> no no <that's>, kidding. <laughs> I don't know, Jon Stewart's like a crack shot, right? He's like a sniper. Yeah. Okay, so Jon Stewart with no ring versus Hawkeye, <laughs> maybe... Maybe that's a fair fight. I was thinking like John Stewart versus like Rick Jones. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I think cool. I think John Stewart would beat Jarvis. So I would say that's a pretty one sided fight. Huh? Yeah, jo Justice League is clearly better. You Ooh. know what? Let's not even go with mainstream characters. Let's go with completely off the wall characters. Who would win in a fight? Big Barda or Doctor Druid? Simeon? <laughs> oh. I mean, I hope Big Barda just because I kind of hate Dr. Druid. Everyone hates Dr. Druid. I'm giving it to Big Barda. <laughs> Wait, who wins between uh, Jarvis and Alfred? Oh, Jarvis. Uh, Jarvis got that no. new experience, man. No, that's, that's got to go to Alfred. Really? Alfred? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Alfred Jar Jarvis is going to come to clutch with that vacuum cleaner, and he's going to – Alfred's done. All right. Squirrel Girl versus Chemo. Who is Chemo? 
good idea. Is, or good question. Is it? It's Squirrel Girl. The answer is Squirrel Girl. Cancer Woman? What's chemo? What? It just it doesn't matter because Squirrel Girl was an option. So. Yeah, she wins. Uh, she wins basically every fight ever, even you know to my behest in the Marvel canon, uh, since she apparently has beaten Galactus in one-on-one combat. She has not beaten Galactus of in course. one-on-one combat. She beats Thanos. Yes, she has. She beats Thanos in one-on-one combat off panel. She, she has talks Galactus Thanos down in one. And beats him. <laughs> so that's a thing that worked out. Does it really matter if it's a fist fight or does it like? Uh, whatever it was gonna be a fight and she won anyway and it was like she totally had that upper i would say uh no gadgets no tools captain america can just pretty much beat any non-powered version of the justice league like batman Hawkman. i think cap could beat Hawkman. i think that'd be a pretty fair fight even if they had wings and maces and think fields. killer croc versus uh reptile you see member of the justice league though what she... wait like like reptile like no, like from the no, Avengers. No, like uh, Doctor Connors. Oh, Liz lizard. lizard. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, uh, that's, that's it. You're off the stuff. podcast. I'm, oh my god. I'm a fake. No, um, actually, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Killer Croc would win that one. Like New Age, New Age Killer Croc, or like Batman the Animated Series Killer Croc. I originally was because Batman Animated Series, but because the new one's like, like a story tall, right? Yeah. I do not know if Killer Croc has the ability to telepathically control crocodiles. If he does, then it might be fair. But since the lizard can definitely do that, uh, I'm going to go with the lizard, although we went off the Justice League of You know, lizard got beat by a fire extinguisher in Amazing Spider-Man, so I don't want to give lizard too much credit uh, for his fighting prowess. Just saying. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Let's see. What's another, like, really obscure... Avengers. So character. how about Vibe versus Quake? Vibe versus Quake. Um. I mean, Daisy Jones was trained by Nick Fury, right? Daisy Daisy Jones, huh? Daisy D- Daisy Johnson. Daisy Johnson. Johnson. That's what I said. You just cut me off. Such oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. You cut me off okay. before I could finish. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Quake. Yeah, she, she she's is... five more points. She has better stats. She's exceptionally intelligent, actually. Like, well. Um, with tactics she's really good with tactics i'm not saying like you she can you know pick up a gadget and take it apart and like put it together and stuff i don't i don't think she's like that it's called vibe uh, but, bump. wow wow so but she's like uh like captain america with tactics oh sure so so i'm gonna i'm gonna I'll probably give that one to quake uh what's another really oh here moon knight pick pick an obscure character that moon knight could definitely beat from the justice league fire could he beat fire? <laughs> Is ice uh, within any radius <laughs> to help? Uh, no, we're just going to put fire versus Moon Knight. Which uh, one wins? Man. I'm pretty sure Moon Knight's got like some sort of extinguisher gadget. Do you, on do on you his think? moon belt? <laughs> I mean, I saw his, like, I read his Warren Ellis run, and I'm pretty sure he was like just Batman in like a white suit. So he was like, yeah, he kind of, he kind of is. He's like, here's my moon disc filled with a uh, cold spray, and it just <laughs> freeze people. Uh, what Red Rocket is he a Justice League member? International, but Justice yeah. League member. Uh, how about him versus? Uh, let's see, who else was Enigma? How about Enigma? Oh, dude, Red Rocket would kill Red her Rocket. so fast for the for the what Soviet like? Union. Oh yeah. <laughs> Red, Red Rocket's all about that that life. Okay. He, right. His, well, his Hero we... version is terrible, but he would so just shoot someone down. All right. Well, we've probably run this topic. I mean, it really comes down to whoever would be writing the storyline where these people, you know, fight. That, that whoever they want to win is who's going to win. You know, because that's just kind of like how it works out with uh, fights. So if you are genuinely curious and you did not know this existed, there was like a there was a very brief moment in history during the '90s where the Avengers did actually fight the X Men in the comics. Yes, the Avengers did between, fight the X Men, Chris. You're right. Uh, no, the the, the <laughs> Justice League. Yeah. Well, yeah, they fought them a couple times too. Uh, but it is a real thing. Uh, they did a crossover. I thought some of it was like super stupid. 
uh, when I read it. I was like, this is not how this fight would go at all. But realistically, it didn't matter what I thought because that's how the writers wrote it. So Batman ends up beating the Hulk. So you're like, what? Okay. I know. Right, whatever. In one of those things where they did like the DC Marvel crossover, they put it to like a fan vote. And so they had Wolverine beating like Lobo. Where at, like, yeah. at the time, Lobo was, like, trading blows with, like, Superman in the DC comics. And then they just, like, had Wolverine take him behind a bar and mess him up somehow. <laughs> and I was like, you know, yeah. I'm a huge they Wolverine had to, fan, but They had to, like, no. shoehorn wins in for certain characters based off of how the votes went. And it didn't really pan out very well. I don't know. It was weird. But it is a thing. I think it's, like, what, like, four or six issues or something like that. If you're genuinely interested, you can go out and find that. Um, so, any last minute things you wanted to say? We'll move on to Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. No, I think that's all. Make an that's amalgam in. set. Yeah. yeah. I doubt DC would ever allow that to happen with as controlling as they are for their regular DC sets. Yeah, they won't even let like bystanders have an uh, image on the card. What's that's, up with that, yeah. DC? Yeah, that's weird. All right. Hey, Jedi Legends here, click tip of the week. Help you, I can. <laughs> Take you to your destination, I will. Poison. It's easy to forget. New poison. He put that in quotes. That is now a free action. So you can choose to affect it uh, at any point in your action phase, no longer at the beginning of the turn. So the kind of the history of poison is a little weird. It used to be like this really pretty non-useful power it said at the beginning of your turn do one damage to adjacent opposing characters but it could and has always been able to be reduced so that has been a thing um and then they changed it uh to you can you can activate it in your turn if the character activating it has not been moved or placed and I think when they did the rules change back in 2017, Calder and I, we, we hands down agreed that this was a much better version of Poison, right? Yes. What? Huh? Sorry. That sounded yeah, like Calder. Thanks, I, uh... thanks Calder. <laughs> No, you're off the podcast. I, I blanked out. Me. I barely <laughs> use poison. I my poison never works. I never get to use it the way I want it to. I've tried really hard uh, with all sorts of really cool abilities and whatever, and like some old tactics with poison don't work anymore. New tactics, you know, poison changes and ruins a lot of things. Old poison was so much better, even though it was at the beginning of turn. Whatever. Anyways. Well, when they introduced pink powers, they introduced sidestep, and because of the way they ruled. They said that at the beginning of turn, effects can be stacked however you kind of want to do it. So if you wanted to sidestep and then poison, you could. And now they they changed it so you can't do that anymore. So it was like poison went from pretty bad to really good to eh, they dialed it back like, a little okay. bit. Like, okay. It's, it's you still know, pretty useful. You can at least outwit and then poison um, because oh, I think there was a while there where it was I, beginning of your turn. You what could, uh, I think, like, any free action you could do at the beginning of your turn, and until you took a power action, it was still technically the beginning of your turn. So you could, like, See, perplex, outwit, poison, like, all that stuff. That's, step. yeah, that's the way it was. But then when they introduced the action phases, it was beginning of your turn, action phase, and then it was any action phase at all. And that said, even a free action would lose the beginning of your turn, I believe. Yeah. Which yeah. sucks. So... Uh, just to recap, in case it got convoluted for anybody out there that, you know, doesn't really know, uh, if they move or get placed in any way, if they change places on the map, they, they can't use poison. So just make sure that you use it. It, it mostly comes in effect in the games that I've played in, a, in, a, in an event where my character attacks your character, knocks them off of a reducer onto, like, combat reflexes or something like that, and I'm like, oh, good, you don't have a reducer anymore. Poison. Those are the generally the events of when I use them. Yep. That's fair. That's, uh, I suppose. I've tried it a few times where you're like, that guy's got invuln. If I hit him for, like, five, maybe he'll be on, like, regen, and then I can poison him to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mostly just when people lose their reducers is, I think, when it comes into effect. Or when it just becomes your turn and your opponent wasn't able to knock your poison character off of poison before the turn ends. So you're like, ah, it's the beginning of my turn again. Bam, poison everyone. So 
that is also generally when it happens. So that is awesome. Probably about those two uh, scenarios are most of the time when poison is going to get used. Okay, well, that is Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. You can uh, jump back and listen to older episodes if you want to hear some more of those. A lot of people actually ended up really, really liking those. Speaking of Jedi Legend, I did want to mention this uh, in, in a personal message on Twitter. I thought it was funny. Uh, on the last episode, you, Calder, and I, we were doing our extremely awesome British accent. They were so good, Chris. Um, Jedi Legend, I asked him how, what he thought about our british accent since he is in fact british he said the accents were comedy gold like extras from an austin powers movie <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> well austin powers he's the most fluently speaking british person i know so i will say that's uh that's a plus plus in my book now he said the extras from an austin powers movie oh. what i want to know is was uh was austin powers who is uh, what's his what's his real name? Mike uh, Myers. Michael Mike Myers. Yeah. Obviously, he is not British. Was his British accent good or was it bad? That's what I want to know. Well, we're just extras, so we, we're not getting paid enough to think that hard. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'll take okay, a stand well, and say that it, it was very good. I, yeah, I, it was I almost it was pretty as much good as spot ours. on. I I think that like. I don't think that British people actually spoke that way until they heard Mike Myers, and they were like, this is how <laughs> we are supposed to be speaking. I think that's actually oh, the, the way Oh, he's had it right this whole time. What I want to know is, do British people like listen to American accents, and do they go, man, they really messed up our accent. I can't believe they've – I can't believe you've – See, I knew you were going to go into that. <laughs> See, in my opinion, the American accent and like the Midwest accent – is just fully enunciating words. It's just like saying things the way they are written down. And I, I feel like that's a, a mean thing to say, but that's definitely how I feel. I don't know. We leave a lot of G's off the end of our words. No, we, we just put apostrophes. We speak normal, man. We that's the way it's it is not, supposed to G. We speak normally. Uh, <laughs> and we leave, leave a lot of G's off. So it's not just running. It's I'm running. So I don't know. Fun, I guess. Calder, do we have any birthdays this week? We do not. Well, you, listening out there in podcast land, if you have someone in your life that you would like to give a shout-out to on the podcast and get a sexy, happy Arabian birthday, let us know whose birthday it is that's coming up and when it is, and we can give them uh, one of those beautiful uh, harmonic tonal voices that is our happy Arabian birthday. Um, we also have an, a crazy, crazy update for the Dial H home base initiative map, which I do have to say. Now, the map, once again, is getting uh, created by one of our very own citizens, and that is Citizen Kirby Ronnie. Um, I am so sorry, <laughs> is what I have to say. It's so There's so many people that jumped on and started claiming areas. There was a surge. Uh, there was a rush. Wow. It was it was weird. So uh, we will update that the best that we can with the living map. So if it is not claimed, you can claim a state. I think we're going to have to break Australia into multiple places so we can claim different places in Australia. Uh, Mexico got claimed, which I thought was great, fantastic. I love it. Uh, we got Texas. We'll, we'll update it all. Is there anything specific you wanted to talk about in that? You know, uh, we got to change up Australia because right now it's not read the way how Australians read. Uh, the words are still right side up. Australians uh, read upside down, as we all know. So we need to get that fixed since they are on the upside down side of Earth. Um, I'm sorry if I offended any Australians in making it <laughs> right side up. I know that's not your culture. Uh, so I, I'll get that fixed as soon as possible. It's not they that they read heard... upside down. It's when it goes through the internet tubes. By the time it gets there, it's upside down. So if we don't oh, flip good, it first, good. they won't right. know what's going on. They'll be like, "Oh, geez, this is just this is like Arabic, and I can't read this." And then they just delete it. How do their figures stay on the maps? Oh. They, I feel like they're constantly just falling towards the ceiling. Oh, they are every single one of those jokes i am not <laughs> original at all <laughs> okay well i don't think that i have anything else for the community section so calder do you have anything else you know i do believe that is it my man that's that's community 
Okay. Well, Simeon, thank you very much for coming on. We appreciated you uh, losing in Bat Samaritan. That was cool. I appreciated Calder, Calder not uh, pulling his weight in that. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really, I can't believe. Right? Just same. Um, <laughs> you know. same amount as I. So. <laughs> I can't believe Caller let Squirrel Annoid got by get by him. Bro, again. those clues were so bad. They were terrible for Squirrel Annoid. Ah. How do you not know Squirrel Annoid's dial like the back of your hand at this? I point? see it two, uh, three, apparently three times every nine months. So, there, there. That's why. All right. I know, it sounds like an excuse to me, Calder, but... <laughs> Seriously, thank you, though, Simeon. Um, you out there in podcast land, you can follow us uh, on Twitter at Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four. Uh, congratulations! Ladies and gentlemen, we made it to 800 yeah. likes on Facebook. Calder's excited. It's a huge milestone. I was so happy. Uh, that entire day, we were at seven like 93 or four or whatever. And I was like, come on, come on, come on. And then we were like 798. And I'm like, come on. And then all of a sudden it was boom, 800. I was like, yes, yes. I was, uh, I was ecstatic, man. It was awesome. So, Finally over 800. Yeah, that is really cool. We do appreciate that. Uh, the next milestone since we hit that is going to go back to Twitter. Let's see if we can get to 700 followers on, on Twitter. Give us so that would be re- the old Twitter facts. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a Twitter, go make a Twitter. Uh, if you just want news, I mean, for Heroclix, obviously, we're pretty up to date on that stuff on Facebook and Twitter. So uh, if nothing else, you might get up-to-date information like the pr- pretty much usually within the first couple hours or so when stuff drops is when we get it up on there so uh on facebook just search dial h for hero clicks you can email us send us an email we get those from time to time on uh that is going to be let's see dial h for hero clicks at gmail.com all right that's all i got all right fantastic before i read us out of here i do want to say i am this weekend is the clwko in kansas city missouri uh, I'm going to be there. I believe Simeon's going to be there. I believe uh, Happy Little Hero Clicks Devin is going to be there. So if you're going to be there, stop on down. We always have a great time. It's sealed, so it's not some crazy 300 point whatever. It's just going to be a fun sealed WKO, and I can't wait to be heading down there this weekend. Anybody else want to say anything before I read us out of here? And we go. S- Simeon, do you have anything else you would like to say? Uh, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to the Happy Little Hero Clicks League that me and Calder did. Um, it was like a cool format where it was like the last three sets. It cut out like all the IDs. It cut out all the retaliators. It only used the last three sets that were made. That was crazy fun, even though like I did not come close to winning. So that's all I got. All right. Okay. All right, well, fantastic. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails.